Hello, uh, this is Dr. Ayub. Uh, today, actually, I will go over the anatomy of the fallopian tube and the vagina. Yeah, in the last lecture, um, actually, I realized that uh, I didn't go over the anatomy of the fallopian tube and the vagina. Uh, that is, which is very important, I believe. So, let's talk about it. In this session, I actually go over the parts or structures or component parts of this uh, fallopian tube and the vagina and its clinical utilization of understanding its anatomy. What does that mean? Clinical implementation means um, clinically there could be some diseases and that can affect or involve certain part of these two structures and can cause the onset of sign and symptoms. If we really understand this anatomy, then we can recognize and realize the signs, symptoms and its severity. Okay? And its complications too. So, let's talk about the fallopian tube. Fallopian tube, actually its name is ovid oviduct, sulfinx or simply tube, okay? It has three names, oviduct, sulfinx and tube. or just tube. Ovary duct means duct of ovary uh, because it contains the ovum from the ovulation of the ovary. Sulfinx is another name and uh, OB, uh, and the tube because it looks like a tube, like a trumpet. Okay, so when the, it is well known we most of the time we use this two word sulfing, sulfingitis okay, hydrosulfing, pyosulfing uh, hematosulfing or tube, like a tubal pregnancy tube ligation okay, so that's the way we like to use this two term okay, let's talk about the anatomy Okay, so let's deal with the parts of the fallopian tube. Okay, it should be A. I made a mistake. Okay, so fallopian tube. Parts of the fallopian tube. As I said before, it is a tube, looks like a trumpet. Trumpet is an instrument for the music. And it is a muscular tube. Because in its wall, the middle layer is a muscle. The outer layer is a serous layer, middle layer is a muscle layer, and the innermost layer is a mucus layer. And the mucus has fold and its brush border. Okay, so now 
What are the parts? Let me draw the fallopian tube first. Fallopian tube and its connection is very important. I will draw in one sided, okay? Okay, so this is uh, uterus and the vagina. Okay, so this is uterus and its fundus. This is body and this is cervix and this is vagina. And you know that this is internal loss, this is external loss and this is itmus okay so this is at the junction known as itmus and this is endometrium Okay, I'm drawing on both sides. Okay, and Okay, so from the uterus and to the pelvic end, this is a tube-like structures and <clears throat> this part from here to there, it is known as interstitial or cornual part. Cornual part because this part is known as cornua. Cornua. This is cornua or interstitial. Okay? Interstitial part. You need to remember. And this part is very important. It passes through the myometrium because you know that this is myometrium. Sometimes there is a cornual ectopic pregnancy, okay? Cornual ectopic pregnancy is very dangerous, okay? It's very dangerous. And cornual ectopic pregnancy that happens in the cornual part of the fallopian tubes. Okay, so this is cornual part and up to this known as itmus. Okay, and then the substantial dilated area is known as ampulla.
and the ring area is known as infundibulum. So we got the four part. Convert part, number one, itmas, number two, ampulla, number three, and the infundibulum, number four. And these are the finger-like process is known as fimbri. Fimbri. Okay. So this like a tentacles. Tentacles and that grab the um, ovum after ovulation. Okay. So now if I draw another structures that is the ovary it will help to understand the overall concept okay so this is ovary and this is ovary and ligament okay and uh, this is ovary And ovary usually have the ovulation. So now, four parts that we understood, now tell me that which part is the widest part and longest part, which is the ampulla. You need to know the ampulla more details than any other parts because most of the fertilization of the ovum took place, takes place in the ampullary part. Of the elephant tooth, and uh, this narrowingness is very important because look at the diameter. Diameter at the cornual and it must at the narrower part than the ampulla and infundibulum. Okay, so egg is fertilized most of the time inside the ampulla and that fertilized egg needs to be directed towards the endometrium towards the endometrium so this is myometrium this is endometrium And you know that this is perimetrium. Look at the narrowness. Narrowness is towards the endometrium. And the wider part is the ampulla and infundibular part. And the fertilized egg, it has a size. Usually that size and the size of the morula are almost the same size. Morula is a cell of compact mass. Cells, multiple uh, blastomere is in there, multiple. But the total size of the morula is the size of the fertilized egg. That will draw it to make you understand. And that morula is passing towards the endometrium and it turned into a size called blastocyst. And the blastocyst size and the diameter of the cornwall part must match through it. And the blastocyst will come towards the endometrium and inside the endometrial cavity then it will dig down into the endometrium that is called implantation 
Okay? So, if any chance, if the blastocyst or morula get impact or stuck inside the fallopian tube, that is a problem. That is a problem. Well, what can happen? It is a time sensitive growth of the fertilized egg. Every day there is a new sequence happens. By four to six days, the fertilized egg as the form of blastocyst must come into the endometrium. And in by any chance, if that fertilized egg gets stuck inside the fallopian tube and that position it will be implanted on the wall of the fallopian tube. And that we call it tubal ectopic pregnancy. Okay, so now let's draw the layers of the uh, fallopian tube. Okay, it has three layer. The outer layer is the wall has three layers. The serous layer the outermost muscle layer in the middle middle layer and mucus layer innermost innermost layer 
the muscle layer why why there should be a muscle layer and why there's a brush border in the mucus layer okay normally the fallopian tube diameter is less than 5 millimeter and normally it is collapsed and we don't see it until there is some fluid collection in the form of plain fluid, blood, or pus, or lymphatic fluid. Okay? Otherwise, we don't see it. And when we see it, we can see it like a tube with the anachoicness. It could be trumpet shape and it could be tortuous, kinked because of some infection condition okay so now this three layers makes the wall thickened and this tube causes two-way movement one is from in to out while the sperm is passing out sperm is passing out to the pelvic cavity, through the infundibulum, and another time the ovum needs to go towards the endometrium, and that time the movement of the brush border is opposite direction of sperm transmission. Okay, it is very important that this brush border and the muscular movement are intact. Why? Because when the sperm is to go to the pelvic, sperm is swimming. Okay? It should, should not interfere this movement. That's why either the cilia or brush border will help them to move forward or no movement. Sperm will move like this. And in opposite direction, when there's a fertilized egg, that needs to be from here to there within four to six days, that brush border or cilia will move towards the endometrium so that fertilized egg can go to the endometrial cavity. And along with that motion, muscular but muscle has its very important function. If muscles are weak, muscles are paralyzed, or muscle has ischemia, or inflammation, infection, calcification, obstruction, the muscle cannot overcome this resistance. At that time, if there is a fertilized egg in the ampulla, it won't be here. As a result, it might be implanted into the ampulla. We call it ectopic, tubal ectopic pregnancy. Or it could be damaged. Okay, so now you are understanding the importance of the fallopian tube intactness. A common disease called PID, pelvic inflammatory disease. That PID, most common cause is STD, sexually transmitted disease. And most common cause of ectopic pregnancy is PID. The good thing is that it is correctable and infertility can take place with the obstruction of the fallopian tube.